Imagine for a moment you're a firefighter. You run headfirst into hot, burning fire. You hear the roaring of flames and try to breathe and think clearly with all that smoke. The more time that you spend inside the fire, the more likely you are to suffer from cardiac arrest. You're not sure what dangers you will face as you move from room to room, trying to find the family you are there to save. Now imagine instead that as the first responders arrive, they are already equipped with data and 3D blueprints of the building. Artificial intelligence sensors inside the building provide real-time data about the location of the fire, what kinds of materials are burning, and the possible dangers like toxic fumes. When the firefighters arrive, you do not have to rely on instinct alone. Instead, you can work with AI to help you navigate through the fire. It can warn you to avoid the office on the second floor because it's already caved in, and help you to rescue the small child that is hiding in the closet on another floor. Like no other technology before, AI has the potential to support and enhance public safety and save so many more lives, including the firefighters and first responders that help to protect us. Did you know that according to the World Health Organization, 1.25 million people die each year because of road traffic accidents? AI software in autonomous cars can connect to sensors and collects input from maps and video cameras. AI uses deep learning and has the ability to control actions such as steering and brakes. Google claims that autonomous cars are 40 times safer than teenagers while driving. Would you feel safer with AI as your chauffeur or my 17-year-old nephew? Did you know that one in five of all workers' deaths each year is in the construction industry? Earlier this year, 26-year-old Alejandro Pelosi was electrocuted and killed when the cherry picker he was using got too close to electrical wires. Just three months ago, another man died in Burnaby, BC, when there was a mechanical failure and the bucket of the excavator he was using, they were using, crushed him. And a recent investigation on a tragic fall of another young worker in BC showed that he was not wearing proper fall protective gear, that there were improper safety procedures, and that he hadn't been trained properly before we went up. Construction sites are full of hazards that humans must visually detect and train to predict, to predict and prevent. Artificial intelligence is helping to improve overall safety on job sites. We are now starting to see construction sites being equipped with cameras, IoT, IoT systems, devices, and sensors that can help to monitor the construction operations. AI-enabled systems are able to watch what's going on 24-7 without distraction. AI systems are capable of detecting unsafe behavior and alerting the construction team before of potential hazards before they prove fatal. AI increases efficiencies, provides more accuracy, which in turn saves human lives. AI-supported sensors can also be used for actionable, real-time solutions on work sites, for project planning, reducing costs, and most importantly, prioritizing preventive maintenance on machines like the one, like the excavator that killed the young worker in BC. Every day, human error kills human lives. There is no fail-safe answer, and like, life is never without risk. But artificial intelligence offers us an opportunity to reduce some of this risk and potentially save more lives. Fear of new things and technology is also part of the human story. Long ago, we feared falling off the end of the earth, and we were terrified of flying machines in the sky. Overall, AI is not bad for humans. Overall, AI has the potential to make our lives better. With better data, help us make better decisions, and save more. talk about that fireman who's going into the burning <laughs> building so heroically. And I want to ask, how much good does that 3D map do him if the entire family and city was wiped out by a terrorist virus that swept through the city? A fire-breathing AI terrorist? Is there no, this is a that? virus. This is a virus. Oh, a virus. Fire. Sorry, sorry. I heard fire-breathing terrorist. <laughs> I'm sorry, that would have been a better question. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, probably unlikely, but it's more likely in the current reality that a firefighter is going to need this 3D map than a virus going through a ravaging and destroying the entire system. We look at most likely scenarios and whether AI is actually better for human life or bad for human life. And in the current scenarios and in the most likely predictable future, I think that I would go with the use of the 3D maps for firefighters to save lives. Well, another question is, one of those super safe cars um, drove straight into the side of an 18-wheel truck because it was trained to look at those big rectangles and think, those are road signs, I can go right under it. Pow. It's also true that kids with paint and reflective tape can fool auto-driving cars. Isn't it more dangerous to give up control to something that may have flawed programming or flawed logic we never imagined? We're currently in the very early stages of studying autonomous cars. 1.25 million people die each year because of human error. I don't think that there's been anywhere close to that because of autonomous cars, and there most likely won't be. But right now it's a learning process. When we first flew the first airplanes, they were crashes. It didn't work. They learned from that. They made adjustments. And now it's one of the safest transportation vehicles in the world. So I think that we're going to get there. It's just a matter of time. We're really in the early stages. Um, so AI does, is becoming more and more powerful, but it doesn't, it doesn't value human life. It doesn't have a sense of right and wrong. It doesn't have morality built into it. It just follows a mission. Isn't it very dangerous to turn over so much control in our society, both on small things and in big things, to AI when it has these kinds of shortcomings? It would be dangerous. That's why we're not doing that at this time. And that's why the leading scientists in the world have formed an organization to discuss the key ethical issues and have made an agreement about what the principles are when they are doing AI studies and AI research. And these are part of the, the ethical decision making and um, being against any use of AI for nuclear weapons or in defense are part of the principles that this group has, has put in place already. So we do have people working on this. Um, and obviously, we're not at the point right now where we're going to turn everything over to AI.